James, we're back. We are. Back again. Back with black men's peens. The black men's <laughs> In chimichibas. <laughs> peens, peens is on the chimichibas. This is now chimichibas. Peenus. <laughs> Chimipeenus. Peenus. E-R-S. Um... <laughs> <laughs> what an interesting topic we're going to be discussing this. Discussing? Discussion. Discussing this. Because he'll be gushing over it. No, stop. <laughs> Last episode we were talking about the show, the show Naked Attraction. Naked. Naked. Naked Attraction that has been making some rounds. Some headway. Actually, Rhett and Link did a video on it. That's how kind of, sort of, that's how it's caught on. I mean, it's not mm. rated very highly, but I've heard uh, quite a few people watch it. Just because of Rhett and Link? No, just because of what it is. It's kind of weird. Um, and we were discussing in the last episode about how there was, there was quite a showy girl who was all like... They I have guys, a big black penis up my bum. There was a black man who came along and he had this quite large flaccid penis. Which, you know, is always dodgy because the flat. That's why I heard someone outside. <laughs> it's always dodgy because the, the flaccid side... It's you leaning on the d oh, desk. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm worried that your mum's gonna burst in the room and be like, "What are you talking about?" Why are we talking? <laughs> no, the thing, the the, the flaccid size is always is extremely variable, isn't it? Based on temperature and also people. Well, yes, yeah, some people are growers and some people are showers. Exa exactly, you get this term growers versus showers. So this is black guy with a very large, large flaccid penis, but he could and have a it could shrink. <laughs> But no, no, but it was flaccid. No, I, was, I meant like he could shrink as he as he awakens the beast. Oh well, I was just thinking it might stay that same length once he's awakened. Yeah, <laughs> once his beast has been awoken, <laughs> the cage may be open, but the beast is still asleep. Exactly. Now, yeah, and of course, so she was like, "Oh, I'm instantly drawn to yellow." Um, because the base on colours. And yeah, because they have them in different color chambers. I'm instantly drawn to yellow, and it's like, oh, what was it about yellow? It's like, it's, it's like, oh, it's penis size. It's quite large. It's like, do you like the big one? It's like, oh, who doesn't? And then the gay guy made a point saying like, oh, it's not all about size, you know, it's about what you do with it. And now, okay, I don't know if maybe she was making a joke or if she was doing it for the sake of show or if she's someone who prefers a, a larger. Slingeding. I I think. I know, I just liked the the, the gay man's... Because... He liked the gay man's When it comes pitch. to, like, it, guys generally have less insecurities than girls. Yes. I You know, we have more sort of... We might worry about our weight, uh, how muscly we are, possibly things like hair. I'm just thinking Sometimes. Think of the average guy. Yeah. And then... The Shween. <laughs> The Shween length the final one. is the main one. Um, you know, girl, and then girls, you know, girls have things like they've got breasts. Oh, will you they've got please hair, touch got... my Shween? Is that the song? I've walked many miles. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, sorry. So yeah, girls, you know, they've got hair, makeup, way, uh, even individual parts of their body, like oh my thighs, and it's and they've got breasts. So they've got a lot, but there's more. If a girl's it's more okay for a girl to be open, like, I've got small boobs, and people are like, oh, it's fine, I know, everyone wants large boobs. If a girl comes out who's got, got, got a small boobs, everyone's gonna stop. <laughs> everyone's gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> that was my impression of a crowd of people. <laughs> Throw up a crowd of people <laughs> taunting the guy with the small shween, and I want the small shween guy on there as well, but you don't have to show his shween. <laughs> yeah. But he, can no, have a he can have a tr it's, chimmy it's shween. Like made to be, like, the main thing of a guy, like a guy is measured, like, cause by his the, measurements, you, you never see, when someone first with a girl and her boobs, they'll be like, oh, she's got big boobs, not, oh, she's big, but when it's a guy, it's not, he's got a big penis, it's, he's big, mm. it's him, he is his penis now, and it's like, <laughs> I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's something, I know what you mean, yeah, it's something, you say, yeah, they say like, he's large, yeah, not he has a large. Way loads of focus, like cra like there's always jokes made about it, you know, like like you've got the classic line of someone pulls out a small gun and someone pulls out a large gun and he's like, you compensate for something. Yeah, and, and something like that. That that was they made that joke in Doctor Fucking Who. 
Wow. Um, g g like, David Tennant pulls out his sonic screwdriver, and obviously Matt Smith's sonic screwdriver is a significantly larger sonic Oh, they had a crossover. Yeah, did you not know about for the 50th? I don't know. I don't oh, watch right. Doctor Who. Well, um... Sorry. I don't watch modern mo Doctor Who, really. I, I, I watch classic, mainly. But anyway, what happened is, yeah, David Tennant comes along, and he pulls out his sonic screwdriver, which, you know, is probably about that, that size, which is... I'd say it's about four and a half inches, maybe. Yeah, and that Matt Smith <laughs> got this giant sonic like the the prop is massive, and then like, sort of, he pulls it he pulls it out and goes Where like the fuck springs it up, which means it's when the oh, when the toy of the Matt Smith sonic screwdriver is like at full extension, it's like the size of my forearm. Yeah, and the or the size of your David foot. Tennant tries to like move up the the slide on his thing to make it a little longer, and he's like compensating for something. And, <laughs> And that's just like sharp. So they made that joke in Doctor Who. Is is such a common. Jo and I think it's there's a lot less focus on like what is with all these skimpy outfitted. They're all triathletes. Oh right, is that we in like an Olympic zone? Well, we're just near the that bike track. All oh, right, the one that takes us down to the previous city. Uh, wing attack on him. It's like. Uh, yeah, go on. Men are very penis centric. Yeah, I'm. I'm just trying to say that in terms of insecurities, men have less. I'd say. But like, the ones that they do have. Th yeah, there's equal not. Like, it's out. not like there's like a, a, a sort of, a. There's never like a, penis support group or something like that. <laughs> or like a, it, it's such a common joke and observation to be made compared to like the women's. Like you know, I just like, want to say we're not saying that women's problems. Like women have less to worry about. We're saying, like, you, we're saying women have more the, support. Yeah, we're saying the problem that a man does have, he's expected to just, yeah, it's live like, with. And it's, plus, it's not. You can get breast implants. It's not all you can do about your peen. Well, I mean, you can get, you, you can, you can get penis enlargement. Yeah, but all they do is they cut a ligament. Yeah. And it means it then you might get like an extra inch but then I don't think it like stands up at attention. I've, I've been a bit away from my mic, sorry. That's that's how the enlargement works. Or they inject oh. fat into it. Yeah, which is makes I it... watched a documentary. <laughs> now I, I wonder like why. I'm, now it's not like I'm penis obsessed. My dad was like telling me about this documentary and I was like oh it's so weird, there's a 60 year old man who was like wanting to get his penis enlarged. I've got to pause. Yeah. Did we catch a Routes? No, Wally did. I know why I'm confused. Why? I've been playing Sapphire on my Game Boy. Uh, and I caught a Routes. Yeah. So I was like, where the fuck is our Routes? <laughs> but we didn't catch one. There's all the worst bit about Pokemon. Uh oh. Oh, he didn't kill us. We need to get a Skarmory, remember? Why? Because they're cool. Yeah, like but why do we need. Oh, I guess Bud's dead. I oh, know he isn't. Um, do you want to carry on about penis length <laughs> programs? I don't think we. I don't know if there's much else to visit on that. We've talked about penis before. How he's just taunting me now. Jonah Falcon. Yeah, fuck is it. apparently thirteen and a half inches. He's the size of a big Papa pizza. A Papa, a, not the largest Papa John's pizza, but the, he's the size of the largest Domino's pizza. Yeah, that's it. Which is that's an insane size. For a thingle, a thingy. This is this music? Hee <laughs> hee! What's a bug catcher? I'm now a bug maniac! But my love for Pokemon remains unchanged. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that. Oh god, he looks like a maniac and all. One thing I'd like to say I hate the. I didn't do the cough on purpose, I actually genuinely, like, fucked up. But I hate when movies do that same joke because that stereotype, not that stereotype, that cliche is so old now. Because you know, the cliche was originally they do a big laugh. Then the let's make fun of the cliche was the they do a big laugh, they cough halfway through. But now the big laugh and the cough has now become the cliche. So you you always watch a film and it's he starts going, <laughs> I'm like, it's gonna come, isn't it? <laughs> and it's like, so. He's gonna come, so isn't he? Oh! What? He said he's gonna come, isn't he? 
I said, no, it's gonna come. Uh, and it's so old, like it's coming up. so many it's coming things. Up. It's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up. You know it's how since you're close to your microphone, your audio is gonna be louder and it's gonna dominate mine. It's there. Right. It's, it's such an old cliche, and I'm so tired of it. Some films, you can parody your villain in a different way. Yeah. Okay. The Magic Roundabout did something. Do you remember the Magic Roundabout? You're talking about the magic roundabout, and we're talking about the quality of villains. <laughs> what do you mean? The magic fucking roundabout. I think I don't think Z-Bad's that bad. The it's like stereotypical, roundabout. but they actually. Do you know much about the magic roundabout? Yeah, I used to watch it. Do you know about the TV series? Yeah, that's what I used to watch. Do, oh, do you know about the the film though? I've seen the film. Yeah, I I like because I didn't know much about that film, but obviously my dad did because he used to watch the program. And then what happened is the film came out and he was all like oh god magic I remember that from my childhood stop motion figures and all that lot and I was like oh jeez Zebedee and, and then I watched the film and I, it was like the first film that I was like fell in love with I must have been about five or six and I just fell in love with that film mm -hmm. I don't know why and now I still really like it. even though it's not that good I still really like it but anyway we're going off topic the laugh cliche thing mm. the, the magic roundabout D d put a spin on the laugh slightly differently, where Zbad and his and Sam the soldier have a laughing moment. Yeah. But they play it slightly differently. So instead, so Zbad laughs and he does it completely fine. Yeah. Then Sam tries to laugh and he's like, <laughs> and stuff. And Zbad looks at him and he's like, no, Sam, it's all at the back of the throat. And it's like, it's not funny. It's not that funny, but it's at least it's thirty percent funny. It's not him coughing, which they always do. Kung Fu Panda 2 is actually a good film. And okay. they do a hilarious moment in it where they have the villains wait in because he knows Poe, the panda, is going to be arriving. And, you know, there's. Is that like, the tiger? I said Poe, the panda. No, the bad guy. Is that oh, the no, tiger? Oh, no, this is Kung Fu Panda 2 with the villains, the peacock. Oh, that woman. The female one. No, it's a man. Is it? Yeah. Is it the one that's like stereotypical Japanese kind of voice, Chinese Asian voice? I don't no. Let me Google. I d <laughs> no, right. <clears throat> the main villain of the second film is a peacock who has discovered gunpowder and now has a cannon weapon. And what happens is the peacock, he knows he he uh, got a prophecy saying. Sorry, if this is spoilers. But he got a prophecy saying that he's gonna, you know be defeated by a warrior of white and black or something like that and so the um white and black so the uh he's like well i'll just you know fucking kill all the pandas in china his name is shen thank you he's like i'll kill all the pandas in china and then he says like uh he missed poe and then it's like, the warrior is still on your way. And he finds out and there's people like, yeah, I've seen a panda. And he's like, oh shit. And then it, it, they've got a scene of him like preparing for Poe's arrival. And you see him, is there like, aha, Poe, we meet at last. And he's like, no, no, that's not. And he's like, I see you finally found your way to me. It's about time we met and stuff. And they, they you know, they show that. And then later when Poe turns up, he's like, just like, climbed up all these stairs so super out of breath and he comes up and he's like Poe we meet at last but before we can finish saying anything Poe's like oh yeah how you doing and stuff and he's like oh. <laughs> and I think that was really funny it's of course more funny when you watch it but I, I know what I, you mean I, I audibly laughed at that hey how you doing <laughs> <laughs> anyway, how you doing oh god Jesus this episode's gone on for a while we've discussed a lot of things we've discussed penials we've discussed movie cliches that's about it Next time, I mean, on the next episode of Chimmy Chibas, uh, uh, we'll finally uh, fight this uh, gym. Uh, oh, 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 it's a girl with two flowers. Yeah!